Oh, hello everybody, it's your boy Prof Chaff, and we're back again with a new video. This is Extreme Stories of Revenge from History. Let's check him out. Sounds dope. We're going over history. the most brutal stories of revenge in human history. Let's go Number in one, human history. Olga and the Drevlians. Olga. We're starting this list with um, quite possibly not one heard of, of the one. greatest ride or die stories in human okay. history. When Olga of Kiev led Your one of the- Your history disturbed me. Why is one longer than the other? the most terrifying Olga and calculated Kiev. tours of revenge following the brutal execution of her damn. husband. It's God, the year God 945, damn. and 945. Prince Igor is ruling over Kiev and Rus, an empire that once stretched over modern day Ukraine. Hey, we're here. I'm here. Hey, I live there. Hey, you see, I'm pointing at the screen like a moron. I apologize. Ukraine, Bulgaria, and a bit of Russia. To his west lived the Drevlians, Ooh, a tribe who some actually kind nose. of hated the Kiev and Rus, but occasionally fought alongside them against the Byzantine Empire. Mm. When Igor's father Oleg dies in 912, Oleg. the Drevlians see it as an opportunity to finally stop paying their tribute, aka their forced protection money, to these <laughs> assholes in Kiev. <laughs> Igor patiently waits forced for his money for 33 money. years until finally Damn. deciding. He lost the tooth. You know what? Kill them all. 34 years would be just too long and personally travels to the Drevlian capital city time. of Korostin to collect his money himself. I'll probably forget he about that. He into the city with a large army and demanded tribute, which the Drevlians begrudgingly paid. And that should have been the end of it, and Igor should have gone on to live a long, happy life. But it wasn't the but end of it. But on his ride home, he feels the tribute was just a little too small. So he turns around with a few of his men and heads back. I mean, it's been 34 years. Yeah, but I mean, you probably should have taken it earlier. Back to Korostin to demand more. When Igor arrives back at the city and begins shouting his demands, the Drevlians surprisingly do not like this and immediately oh. kill his men. God Igor damn. Is saved for an extra horrific ex What happened to the big ass army you had, Igor? Execution. The Drevlians bent two birch trees oh. toward each other and tied oh, one of boy. Igor's legs to each tree. Oh Once boy. Once Igor's legs were fastened, they cut the supports and the trees Was snapped flexible? back to their original form, ripping Igor now into his. two pieces. Oh. The Drevlians' ruler, Prince extra flexible since mal was now feeling pretty good about Small. himself and set his sights on taking over the larger empire by marrying That's the wife. widow olga and this is where things all went downhill for the dread i'll be honest with you she looks like a straight up mommy like in all the good senses because Let's olga, go. she was the wrong person God to mess with damn look at that face yo Prince Mal sends 20 of his best ambassadors to Kiev to inform Olga what had happened to her husband and to propose that she marry him to combine. Hey, you know your husband? Your you might love him, you might not. It's the middle ages, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we ripped him in half. Can you marry me? Brother. Their territory. Oh, it is. Surprisingly, she seems to take this news well oh. and tells the messengers that they should go back to their boat to rest for now. Oh, and that yeah, she's got more than them all. Them back to the city <laughs> to get her. The next morning, Olga's men walk down to the shore to get the ambassadors, but instead of just leading them into the city, they pick up their entire boat with oh. all 20 men still in it. The ambassadors are bull- Bro, I don't think that boat can- What the hell? These were some strong ass men. A boat with 20 people on it. It was probably a lot of this hospitality. God what damn. service? They're being treated like royalty. Until the ride suddenly I mean, got re- Technically, her husband was royalty, so they might- Get treated like royalty, as in half. Really bumpy. So. See, all through the night, Olga had her men digging a huge trench. And when her men yeah, arrived. I don't think you dig with pickaxes. With the Drevlian ambassadors, she ordered do. them oh, to no. dump the boat and Depends all on the, the dirt, men on board into this huge hole. She then orders them to bury these messengers alive. Oh. The Drevlians can do nothing as dirt is slowly Damn. piled on them. And soon they're buried alive. Oh, brother. But Olga was just getting started. Why are her teeth? She then sends Why did you make her teeth like that? She looks hot in the picture. You made her a little female Dracula. Her own messengers to Koristan to ask Prince Mal to send his most distinguished men to Anytime. Kiev to escort his soon-to-be bride. The Drevlians, not knowing what happened to the first group, comply and send a party of lords and they powerful men as escorts. When they arrive in Kiev, Olga tells these distinguished guests <laughs> to relax in a bathhouse her oh men had prepared God. and that she would meet with them after they've freshened up. Her men lead the Drevlian nobles to the bathhouse and once they're in, her men lock the doors and set oh the bathhouse God. and all the men inside on fire. Oh. Olga then Okay, listen, this is one of the things where it's not that bad because you, you probably die from smoke inhalation way before you die from the actual heat, okay? So it's not that bad. You fall unconscious, you probably be like, oh, 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 on the floor, and then you die. More messengers to Koristin, asking Prince Mal to prepare for her arrival. Alive. 
She has one request. Sheesh. She wants a feast to mourn her late husband before the marriage. She like the Drevlians, again, there? not really knowing what's going on in what Kiev, prepare a grand feast for Olga. Do they not have she spice? Arrives, the party begins, and she encourages the Drevlians to drink and mourn with her. They do, and she by the end of the night, all? the Drevlians are all properly hammered. Okay, no. Olga then orders her men to begin killing the now drunk and defenseless. First off, why do they all have the vampire feet? Drevlians. Damn. Surprise! Her men were sandbagging their drinks the whole night and were stone cold sober. <laughs> Historians say Olga was seen cheering her men on as they went around <laughs> slaughtering Damn. thousands of Drevlians, including Prince Mao himself. Olga then returned to Kiev to raise an army to finish them off once and for all. The Drevlians finally catch the hint that Olga maybe wasn't too fond of them yeah. when she returned to Kiev with a massive army and began a siege on the city. For over a year, the citizens of Koristan suffered with little food or supplies, until finally, Olga sends a message saying basically, if you just pay your tribute, this can all be over. Having Listen, at this point, I would not trust a word out of this woman's mouth. If she was a Crusader King's character, she'd have like 26 intrigue. She's out of it. Don't trust her. Three times, and not really wanting to be fooled again, the Drevlians say they will pay the tribute, but are scared that Olga will still kill them. She Probably responds will. and was like, Oh, I know I got a little crazy there after Igor, but it's fine now. A little Just crazy. Send me three pigeons and three Just sparrows go to from people. each house and I'll go away. What? The Drevlians think this is a weird request, but are so relieved that their nightmare request. is finally coming to an end that they quickly go out and find the birds to give her. Okay. That First off, you've been besieged for a year. How the hell do you have these many birds left? How many how much food did these people have? night, Olga has what her men hell? tie a small piece of sulfur bundled in cloth to each bird's leg. They set fire She's to the cloth bombs? and release the birds into the night. How's that work? Olga and her men watch a thousand tiny embers fly off into the distance and the birds go straight to their nests built on buildings oh in Kirsten. Oh my god, that's genius. In hours, the entire city that is, is a fiery genius. hellscape. Olga watched the city burn to the ground and later claimed all Drevlian territory for herself. So yeah, they really should have just paid the tribute. Oh, she's a genius. That's his. It worked. Why didn't you do that earlier? Whatever. It worked. Number two, Damn. Caesar and Olga's the pirates. Oh, I this know this story. story. I know this story. This is one I've heard about. This is a dope ass story. one where I actually feel kind of a little sorry for the would-be. Actually, I don't know the details on the story. I know he got kidnapped. He told the pirates to let him go. They paid off the pirate bounty and then he killed them all. That's all I know about the story. Bad guys. It's the year 75 BCE, and a 25-year-old Rome. Roman nobleman named Julius Caesar was Caesar. sailing the Aegean Sea heading to Rhodes. This Along is the not way, a the ship is boarded by Sicilian pirates, and Julius is taken captive. Now, becoming a hostage <laughs> is usually a terrifying situation for most people. But in this for most noble or high-end people of that time, I don't think it would be that bad. It's like, hey, your family pays your tribute and you're gone. Case, I think the pirates knew right from the start they might have made a huge mistake. Yeah. The pirates take a look at Caesar with his fancy <laughs> clothes and entourage and realize he's probably somebody important. So they set a ransom for 20 talents, worth around $2 million today, give or take a Damn. million. Damn. When Caesar hears this number, he's offended and demands that they up the ransom to 50 talents. He sends his entourage to gather. <laughs> oh my god, that's actual Roman confidence. The oh money my to buy his freedom, god. And he would remain it. as the pirates hostage until they came back with the money. <laughs> the pirates then sail off with Caesar and just a few of his men to their island hideout. Now, aboard the pirate ship, Caesar simply refuses to be a prisoner. In fact, the entire time he's held hostage, he acts as if they were all on his ship, and these pirates are his men. He freely walks around oh the ship, God. eats with the pirates, joins in on their games, and even exercises with them. Damn. He shushes them to be quiet when they're being noisy, and every day he forces them to listen to the speeches and poems he's working on. And that is why the Senate's power is but an maniac. illusion, maintained merely by tradition and weak men. Rome needs a leader who can see beyond petty politics and guide her to true greatness, mm -hmm. perhaps even by force if necessary. How did that go for you, Caesar? How did that go for you, huh? <laughs> you guys are all fucking idiots, aren't you? <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> the pirates were confused as they never had a prisoner behave in such a strange way. But they put up with Caesar because he was kind of charismatic, and he was also kind of their cute? ticket to a huge mm -hmm. payday. What did you do, it's Caesar? It's also worth mentioning that throughout his time as a hostage, Caesar would joke that one day he would crucify them all for this. Once you guys let me go, I'm gonna find you guys and crucify every single one hey. of you. <laughs> hey, brother, that's not something to joke around. Why are you laughing? That is not funny.
totally serious. You're all going to be so sorry. <laughs> 38 days later, Caesar's God, men yeah. return with 50 days. talents, wow. and Caesar is set free. The pirates sail back to their island base with their huge jackpot to get drunk, having achieved financial independence. Caesar, however, did no such relaxing, <laughs> and immediately he goes out, raises a small army, and sails right back to the pirate's island. Yeah, they probably should have expected something like this. Maybe change your cave, maybe go to the cave on the other island or something. Takes Come back on, the 50 talents his men had just given them for the ransom and captures every single one of the pirates who held him captive. Why? Caesar then crucified all of them, just hey, like he promised. I don't think that's how you crucify people. To Caesar's people. credit, he actually did grow a little fond of these pirates, so he slit their throats first to prevent ah. them from suffering for a long time. What a nice what guy. What a nice guy. Number three, the 47 Ronin. We go from pirates who were- Okay, I've heard about this. But I don't know exactly what happened. I know they were unhappy with their lord and they rebelled, something like this. I don't know. Too we'll dumb see. to know what was coming. Let's get to some a story of extreme loyalty when 47 samurai patiently waited for two years to avenge Damn. the death of their fallen master. This okay. story begins in 1701. I was with close, two young I daimyo guess. named Kame and Asano and a man named Kira. Kame Asano. A member I know there is a movie of this. Very legendary. Instructing movie. the two young lords in proper etiquette. Now, Kira, he was a giant douchebag, but because he was close to the Shogun, he basically could get away with anything. <laughs> oh my the story God. goes that when Kame and giant Asano douchebag. traveled to Edo, the two young lords brought gifts, aka bribes, that Kira felt were not big enough. So Kira pretty much spends every day calling them names and overall being a giant asshole. Bring more SAT, Both young lords LOL. were not used to being treated so poorly, but Asano does his best to maintain his composure. Kame, on the other hand, can't take it and decides to oh, assassinate shit. Kira himself. His counselors catch wind of this plan, and behind Kame's back, pay Kira a huge bribe Ooh. for him to stop. With this, okay. Kira unknowingly saves his own life, and he begins to treat Kame much better. Asano, okay. on the other hand, never got the memo about the bribe thing, and so Kira, now left with only one target, ramped up his insults in his direction. Oh, shit. One fateful day, while walking together in Edo Castle, Kira is still running his mouth, calling Asano a country hick with no manners. Asano finally snaps. He, he pulls him. out a knife and slashes oh. Akira, trying oh. to shut him up for good, but Damn. he only manages to cut Kira's face before he's quickly stopped by castle guards. Drawing a weapon within Edo- Come on, brother, you need to do better than that. At least 13 stabs. Castle was a serious crime, and Asano is quickly Education. arrested. His lands are seized, and oh, he's damn. ordered to commit seppuku, oh, a samurai's damn. bloody ritual of disembowelment. Back in his domain, Asano's- been Okay, this is quite serious. Jesus family loses everything, and his samurai, now masterless, are left to find their way as Ronin. Kira receives no punishment and gets off nearly scot-free with just a scar on his face. Damn. Now, Kira was a prick, but he was no idiot. He knew that Asano had very loyal samurai who mm. would probably try to defend the honor of their fallen lord, so he hires okay. extra security and sends out spies and ninjas to track every move of the now masterless samurai. Damn. Over the next year, piece of shit but smart. That is a fucked up combination. Here, Asano's men seemed to move on with their lives the best they could. In this period of peace, there wasn't much demand for samurai, so they took up normal jobs. They became carpenters, blacksmiths, and merchants. The leader of Asano's men, Oishi, seemed Hello. to take the fall from grace exceptionally hard, and he began drinking heavily and visiting brothels in Kyoto. He even divorces his wife and oh, sends his family shit. away so he could be miserable alone. Damn. Another year passes, and much to Kira's relief, none of Asano's men seem to be interested in revenge. He reduces the number of guards at his home and assumes he's in the clear. I mean, but it hey, turns out. To be honest, I would assume the same. It's been a year, these motherfuckers got jobs now. He divorced, he drinking, he fucking. Hey, it's good. Kira was dead wrong. As in the darkness of night on January 31st, 1703, 1703. 47 of Asano's former hey. samurai quietly surround his home in Edo. a lot of people. Asano's men had in fact not moved on. For two years, they had been secretly plotting their Damn. revenge against Kira and crafted an elaborate plan to defend the honor of their fallen master. Going their separate ways, taking up normal jobs, even Oishi, the actual leader of the group, acting like a drunk, was, he was all acting? part of an elaborate multi-year plan to fool Kira into letting his guard... Damn, how many cars did that guy have? Can't you just go and shank him? I guess not, because they would have probably done that. Down. Damn. The group had stayed in contact the whole time through coded messages, and every detail of the night was planned and accounted for. Really? Before the attack, the Ronin visit Kira's neighbors and tell them they're not burglars, simply samurai seeking to defend the honor of their fallen lord. There would be no danger for anyone else. Mm. Unsurprisingly, all of Kira's neighbors hated him too, and no one did anything. <laughs> 
Everybody hated that prick. Thing to stop them. God damn. The Ronin take out How the much perimeter of a piece guards. Of shit was sends archers to climb onto Kira's roof as lookouts. With everything in place, the assault begins. Oishi beats a drum to signal his men to attack, and a group under his command storm the front of the house while another group led by his 16-year-old son storm the rear. Oishi's son, 16 year old son I mean, in those times, I guess, it breaks was through first, but is quickly joined by Oishi's group. The house erupts into a bloody battle, Oof. with the Ronin cutting down Kira's guards left and right. Kira's men soon realize they're no match for these samurai, and they try to send messengers to the shogun, but anyone who leaves the house is quickly shot down by the Smart archers on the plan. roof. The Ronin subdue 38 men, who are now either 30. dead or seriously injured. Wait, when he went for less guards, he had 38 men plus. How many guards did he have before that? Holy shit, how important was this dude? But Kira himself is nowhere to be found. Oh shit. All hope seemed lost. Hidden tunnel? Until they check his bed. It's still warm, meaning Kira couldn't <laughs> have gotten far. The men continue to search Sally, until check they find the a bed? secret passage okay, bro. behind a scroll that hey, leads windows. outside. Inside a small storehouse in the courtyard, the Ronin find a man cowering in the corner with a small dagger who attacks them. The samurai quickly capture this man and call for Oishi, who, using the light of a lantern, finally sees the scar that Asano mm. had left on Kira's head two years ago, confirming Wait, that the man's identity. Oishi bends down to his knees. And Wait, he, did? he cut him on the other side? Am I misremembering something? Respectfully tells Kira that they're simply samurai who are fulfilling their duties to their master. He explains that they'll allow him an honorable death by seppuku, and hands Kira the same dagger their fallen lord Asano had hey, used to do the same. Kira just sits there trembling, and no matter how nicely Oishi asks him to get it over with, he does nothing. Eventually, realizing this was taking way too long, Oishi Stab grabs him. the dagger and cuts off Kira's head himself. As the sun rises, cut his head off with a dagger? Bro, cutting a head off a person is not easy. Rises, God, the damn. Ronin begin the six mile journey with Kira's head to the tomb of their master at Sengakuji Temple. Along the way, word quickly okay. spreads through the city. I'll be honest with you. I thought they did this whole thing at night so that it's like a hidden operation so no one would know who did it, right? And uh, yeah, they did not think to, they did not do that. They, they, this is a spectacle. Of what had just happened. They will get and many punished, townsfolk probably. Who are just waking up, begin running outside they will die. for the samurai and offering them gifts and food as they Damn, pass. Everybody hated this the motherfucker. The sleepless <laughs> arrive at the temple and present Kira's head <laughs> and Asano's dagger before their master's tomb, fulfilling their final duty of defending his honor. They then turn themselves into authorities, Damn. knowing that the crimes they had committed would ultimately lead to their executions as probably, well. Probably, yeah. The Shogun was now caught in a sticky situation. These Ronin were criminals, as they basically went on a murder rampage to kill one of his men. But they were also following the code of Bushido and defending mm. the honor of their master. He ultimately decides that while the men needed to be punished, they could do so with dignity, and he allowed the Ronin to commit seppuku, a Bro. more honorable death. The Ronin were- Fuck that shit, taking my own guts out? Yeah, how about no, can you just fucking shoot me in the face, please? It's the 1700s, 1800s, you have a gun somewhere, right? were then interred Come in on. graves surrounding their master, which can still Aww. be visited today. That's Number dope four, story. Genghis Khan and the Genghis Khan the okay. Quaresmid Empire. Yeah, okay. This Brother. last story is probably is... history's greatest example of fuck around and find I don't out. Know about any and like most things involving Genghis Khan, the death toll in this revenge story is crazy. Yeah. So let's get right Not into it. Not surprised. Homie fucked and killed. That's all he did in life. In 2018, Chinggis Khan sends a caravan of 450 merchants and traders to the Khwarezmian city of Otrar, hoping to expand his trade network to the west. The merchants arrive and are immediately executed by the governor of the city, a man named Inalchuk, who then steals all of the goods brought by the merchants Brother, that is not how you do trade. and sells them to members of high society in the city of Bukhara. <laughs> One camel driver from the caravan manages to oh, escape, shit. and he nice. returns to Mongolia to Bike tell Chinggis what like that, happened. Brother. <laughs> Pissed off, but trying to keep his cool, Chinggis sends another small group of diplomats. Bro, imagine being in this group. Like, hell no, brother. We sent one group, they all dead. Now we send you. Can I quit my job now, please, Chinggis? One Muslim and two Mongolians to the Shah Muhammad himself, the ruler of the Khwarezmian Empire, to negotiate okay, peace. Okay, so not to all the city. All the Shah has to do is let them take Inalchuk back to Mongolia for punishment, and everything would be all good. But they instead of giving up Inalchuk, the Shah Uno reverses. Hey, yo, what is that? What is that? Reverses the envoy and kills the Muslim diplomat. He then shaves the beard of the Mongolians, which was the ultimate form of disrespect oh, in their culture, and sends them back to Shah. 
Okay, let's see. F*** around. Find Check. out. Now it's time to find out. Yeah. Chengiz Where is now find? furious, probably... and he yeah. quickly raises an army of 200,000 men to crush Quaresmia. What? They're not messing- 200,000 men! God damn! At that time, this was a god- This was a gigantic Iran, army. And the Mongolians attack multiple cities at once. <laughs> Two of Chengiz's sons, Chagatai and Ogadai, lead a siege on Otrar to capture Inalchuk. And Chengiz personally goes to Bukhara to punish those who had taken his goods. The Mongols use new siege weapons they collected in China, and soon uh. the walls of Bukhara are destroyed, and Chengiz rides into the heart of the city. Chengiz loudly proclaims to the citizens that he was sent by God as punishment for their sins. Damn. He then orders his men to slaughter everyone in the city, okay, only sparing not... artisans and craftsmen, yeah. which he took as slaves, and young able-bodied men, which he took as human shields for further battles. Meanwhile, his... Oh. Yeah, he's not a good man. Not at all. His sons were busy at work trying to crack Otrar. After Still. five months of suffering, a general within the city realizes it's hopeless and decides to defect with a few thousand of his men and join the Mongols. Mm. He opens the city gates they and them, rushes probably. to join his new Mongolian brothers. But it turns out the Mongols don't really like traitors no matter mm. which side they're on, and they kill the general and his men themselves. Not surprising. With the gates wide open, they ride into Otrar and capture Inalchuk, Ooh. who fights to the end even throwing bricks and roof tiles as a desperate last attempt. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool, though. Let's be honest, that's pretty when cool. When he runs out of weapons. He probably knew what the, was going to happen to him. was brought to Chengiz, and as punishment for his greed, he had his men pour molten silver into Inalchuk's eyes and ears. After this, Chengiz oh, and his forces brother. went on to destroy every city in the Khwarezmian Empire. Shah Muhammad spends the rest of his life running from the Mongols until he dies of pneumonia on a tiny island in the Caspian Sea. Shit. At the end of this revenge tour, the Khwarezmian Empire was gone, and Chengiz had massacred an estimated 15 million people. To put it in perspective, that's yeah. about the population of Okay, how big was the the Empire then? Khwarezmian Of New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago combined. Damn. it's a lot of people. Okay, well that was, that was cool. I hope y'all enjoyed this and... Let me know what y'all think. Check out the stream later on today if you're interested in Elder Ring content. And have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, like, comment, subscribe. YouTube stuff.